And thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am honoured to rise today to speak on Bill C-46, an act to amend the Criminal Code and to make consequential amendments to other acts. I would also like to thank the member from Essex for her very kind words and thoughts, because as a mother, I too am right on the same page with this. So thank you very much for sharing that. Mr. Speaker, today we're speaking about safe roads for Canadians and their families. It surely should be a simple discussion, but we must recognize that with this ramming through of this legislation, our cities and municipalities will not have the proper tools and resources to make sure that safety is our priority. During this summer, I met with many people to discuss Bill C-45, but many individuals brought forward their concerns of impaired driving due to cannabis that we see here with Bill C-46. The task force put together many recommendations for this government to review. These recommendations include the following. One, the chair of the committee indicated that the best solution is to give researchers time to, to, develop, to develop proper detection tools. Number two, for many users, specifically youth, the potency and impact is greatly unknown and underestimated. Number three, increase funding to law enforcement authorities to get ready for the new regime. And number four, and one of the key points that I find extremely important, is both recommended by the task force and the states of Washington and Colorado, who both have uh, legalized marijuana, stressed the importance of extensive and impaired driving campaigns before the legislation. So referring back to these points to begin, I would like to speak about the need for proper detection tools. Results were announced indicating that there was a pilot project using a new device to detect the concentration of cannabis in the system. It was reported by officers that the device was easy to use and successfully detected the drug. At this time, there has been no indication what the next steps will be and how we are going to pay for it. Secondly, it is, is it the best test and will it detect the impairment that is needed? We have heard other members of Parliament speak today about these tests and about the equipment that is necessary, and we do not have the silver bullet when it comes to detection devices. It was also stated that the best method to, preve to prevent impaired driving was public education funds towards public resources and education as well. This is definitely a word that you're going to hear more and more throughout my speech, the word education. Another concern is that un is unknown and underestimated impact of cannabis on youth. Studies show that cannabis has many different effects on people. Specifically, the skills that are extremely important when driving include the loss of motor coordination, problem solving and thinking, and distorted perception. I believe we all agree that these are important skills that should not be uh, at risk when driving. Now, keeping this in mind, take into account a few other factors. Statistic posted by the Canadian Centre for Substance Abuse and Addiction state the following. According to the 2012 Canadian Alcohol and Drug Use Monitoring Survey, 5% of youth aged 15 to 24 reported driving after using marijuana during the past year, compared to 9.4% after consuming alcohol. Data from the National Fatality Database revealed that between 2000 and 2010, marijuana was the most common illicit drug pre present among fatally injured drivers aged 15 to 24 in Canada. The 2011 Canadian Alcohol and Drug Use Monitoring Survey revealed that individuals ages 15 to 24 were more likely to be passengers of an individual who had consumed alcohol or other drugs, rather than to drive impaired themselves. Riding with a driver who has used uh, drugs or alcohol can lead to consequences just as tragic as driving while impaired. Addressing impaired driving must be done amongst our youth. CCSA has conducted a, surveys, a series of reviews examining effective approaches to preventing drug driving among youth. Key findings from this include factual messaging created by youth ensures that information is believable and easily understood by youth. Empowering youth to plan and create their own prevention initiatives can increase the effectiveness and reach of the message. Parents, teachers, coaches and so on should talk to youth about impaired driving and discuss implications to ensure encourage youth to think critically before making decisions. Overall, what we're talking about is awareness campaigns that centre on youth and are needed to deter them from driving while impaired, especially under the influence of marijuana. But once again, my focus is here is on education. The co most common drug used first by Canadian youth is marijuana, and it, we are the second highest use of marijuana throughout the world in our youth population. But where is the education regarding use and potential effects 
as well as the conversation of driving while impaired. Next, what is available for resources and financial support? Currently, the federal and provincial territorial governments have been speaking, but there are no decisions and there is still one main player missing at the table. The cities and municipalities that will be in charge of keeping our roads safe would have been, and who have not been provided this tool. They have been left from these conversations and it, we still have to talk to them. We still need to see what we can do. We need to talk about education. We need to talk about potential detection devices. But currently, all we're doing is reasonable suspicion. How many officers in Canada are currently qualified? With the legalization preceding the increased use, we're more, uh, will more officers need to be trained? where the training is and what are the current waiting times in training. These are things that I've had in my own, uh, in my own riding discussions on. I've spoken to the Chief of Police from the City of St. Thomas, where we talked a lot about the drug, uh, the drug recognition officers. What is the cost? What is the delay? We've heard many reports indicating that there are too few uh, officers available, that the education is not available, and that right now, because of us going forward with this, as well as other provinces or other uh, states, that there is a huge delay in getting this done. According to an article that was published by the Ottawa Citizen on February 4th of 2017, here are the numbers. 2.6 per cent is the portion, proportion of drivers in Canada who admitted to driving within two hours of using cannabis in the past year, according to Health Canada's 2012 Canadian Alcohol and Drug Use Survey. 632,576 people. That is how much this represents. 10.4 million is how many trips this represents. 2.04 million is how many Canadian drivers admitted to driving after consuming two or more drinks in the previous hour. 13.3 million, how many trips this represents. Three times is the likelihood of males to drive after using cannabis compared to females. 5.5% is the proportion of drivers who tested positive for cannabis use according to a 2013 study in British Columbia. And 16.6% is the proportion of fatally injured drivers who tested positive for cannabis according to an examination done between 2000 and 2010. Therefore, there is an issue that we must address and we need to be able to provide the proper resources for our police forces to deal with this. And this is regarding the drug recognition experts. There are currently 578 drug reinforcement or drug recognition experts in Canada and 160 to 200 new DREs are certified every year. But some existing Canadians uh, with DREs do not recertify or they are promoted out of their role. It's hard enough to maintain the current number of DREs, much less increase their numbers, said one of the people working in the departments. At the same time, training is expensive and some of it is currently has to be done in the U.S. Opportunities to get field training in the U.S. are getting squeezed as demand to train officers increases there. There is a clear challenge that needs to be addressed. According to the 2017 budget, and I quote, Health Canada will support marijuana public education program and surveillance activities in advance of the government's plan to legalize cannabis by directing $9.6 million over five years, with $1 million per year ongoing. But Health Canada has just issued a public tender to find a contractor to develop a national marketing plan targeting youth that will focus on education and awareness of health and safety risks with cannabis. This campaign is going to be targeted at Canadian youth aged 13 to 18. A important, an important point to note, though, is that this program is going to start running after December of 2017. So we're talking about putting a program in less than six months before the legalization of the marijuana. So there is no exact date when these ads are going to start. And just, between, uh, just after December 2017 is not good enough. So um, one question to this government is why are they rushing on this issue? Why are we rushing to not keep our roads safe? Why are they not doing more? Why do they have such an impact on Bill C-45 and C-46 other than because of extreme political views? Why are we not taking the safety of Canadians on our roads as paramount? Thank you. Questions and comments. Question and commentaire. The Honourable Member for Dorval, La Chine, La Salle. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my colleague for her comments regarding this uh, bill. Uh, my question to her is, uh, first of all, all the statistics she cited 
serve to only reinforce the need to amend the criminal code uh, regarding this matter. Um, and especially, she said that marijuana is the most used drug, especially by the youth. Could she please tell us uh, what her comments are, regard her insights regarding Mothers Against Drunk Driving and such organizations? Thank you. Well, member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much. And you know, there needs to be more done. When it comes to the great work that Mothers Against Drunk Driving have, does, we have to still understand people still go out on the roads impaired, whether it's drug use, whether it's alcohol use. My biggest fear here is that we are giving us six months for public education. That is not enough. Six months to create a program. That is not enough. So although I see that there's criminal code changes, and I know many people that are talking from the justice side, I will let them look at that. As a mother, I look at the fact that we are not giving us enough time. We're not giving parents enough time, educators enough time, coaches, and more uh, importantly, our youth who are at risk in this bill. We need greater than just six months to throw everybody to get this work done. Thank you. Questions and comments, the Honourable Member for South Okanagan, West Kootenai. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank my colleague for her speech. And I just wanted to, uh, through you, ask her if she might expand on this problem we have. Despite the great need for uh, going after impaired drivers, you know, we have such a, an epidemic of uh, impaired driving deaths and injuries across Canada. But here we have marijuana, which is going to become legal, and there's just no good test for marijuana impairment. There's great tests for THC levels in your blood, but they don't mean anything with regards to impairment. And uh, we heard in the committee that this was a problem. Here we are going to have people with THC levels in their blood because they're using it for medical purposes, or they're using it legally uh, for recreation purposes, but they're not impaired. Uh, they might have used it a day or two ago. They're not impaired, and yet they will be criminalized if they're uh, pulled over and tested using a per se limit for THC. And I just wondered if she could comment on that. The Honourable Member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. I'd like to thank the member for the question. Excellent question. As, as I indicated in my speech, the chair did indicate that the best, uh, the best solution for this was to provide researchers money so that we can make these types of tools for detection. We have found a tool that works, but as the member indicated, it's looking at your blood levels. As the member from Lethbridge uh, indicated, impairment is shown in your fat cells, in your brain. It's just not good enough. So why are we not getting everything done before we put forward this legislation? Why are we not making sure that all of our ducks are in a row so that we can make sure that Canadian families are, are safe on our roads? Thank you. Questions and comments, the Honourable Member for Yellowhead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To my honourable colleague, uh, through you, Mr. Speaker, you know, recent statistics done by the state of Colorado in looking at their marijuana sales that they have been putting through their vendor uh, uh, agencies uh, were uh, approximately $14 million in uh, January alone of 2015. But by January of 2016, one year later, same month, same period of time, $37 million in marijuana sales. Now, as lawmakers, we should be trying to encourage a decrease in impaired drivers. And I'd like to ask through you, does my honourable friend think that doubling the amount of marijuana one year is going to lower the number of impaired drivers? The Honourable Member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Well, thank you very much for the question. You know, absolutely not the case. We recognize that uh, I've spoken to many colleagues who have never smoked cannabis before, many individuals and friends who have never partake, partaken. But the fact is, come the time of legislation, some people do have interest. And so there will be more people trying it because it's legalized. We've had this discussion, I've had this discussion with my staff as well. The moment that you legalize something, it makes it acceptable. So we're going to find that more people are going to just try it. They may not enjoy it, but they'll at least try it. We have to be worried about this imp these impairments. Um, there's the, the discussion of taxation on this as well, where it, it's very concerning. We need to make sure that the money is not about the, the government coffers, but it's actually going to be used as a tool and resource to our, our forces so that they can make sure that our Canadians are safe on the road. We need to make sure that the, polices, the police uh, forces have the proper detection tools and the proper training. Thank you. Resuming debate, reprise du débat,